Hola, soy María Elena Paganini y les estoy presentando una entrevista más para mi programa Marbella Cool. Hoy la vamos a hacer en inglés porque estamos en Nueva York y estamos en Chelsea, en la zona de Chelsea Art District, un lugar especialmente lleno de talentosos artistas. So, I'm going to do in English because for my English audience, uh, I want to introduce you, I'm very happy to introduce you, one of the best contemporary artists nowadays, uh, an Englishman, an English artist that is based in New York, living in New York, and uh, it's a person that you are going to really love. I'm going to show some art, his, uh, his name is George Lewis, and I'm very happy to have talented people in my program, and especially you. Thank you so much for having me on your show, and it's lovely to welcome you to my little studio here in Manhattan, New York. You have a beautiful studio, I can see, no? with a lot of light, it's a very good place to be inspired. No? Yeah, I mean, the most important thing as an artist, I think as for any human being, is the energy. We have to set the right intention, have the right energy, and then we can create our dreams. And I try and do that through art, is tell the story, my story, that is also a reflection of the human story. I was trying to, to ask you uh, how you define like an artist and what you are looking for, uh, like an artist, to, to show the world. But you define a little now, no? Uh, and, but I want you to do bigger, be better, tell me more yeah. about what you are seeking yeah. in this terrible world. Well, I like to start with the definition of what I think an artist is. And I, I think really the job of the artist is to link uh, the finite with the infinite. To, to link the immaterial sacred world with the material world. And when we do that, we really can create truth because we are, in a way, a mystic, a guide, a spiritual seeker. That is, in a way, the archetype of the arch artist, in my mind, is to show the big picture. Even if I'm painting something detailed, it's to show the connection that we have to this planet Earth and how it is a sacred space. That is very nice. And do you think that in the world that is terrible nowadays, in many ways, you know, wars, discrimination, bullying, abuse, a lot of things, like uh, race, we are going to extinguish or we are going to evolution? What do you think about that? It's a wonderful subject in the sense of I think a lot about it. It's a very complex subject. I think I will share this with you that what we're doing is we're nursing an old civilization and birthing a new. As we leave the age of Pisces, the Christian Judaic Islamic era behind us, the era of monotheism, we have to now co-create something new. And that co-creation is exciting but frightening because when we create, we don't know the future. We have lulled ourselves into false sense of security thinking this is the way it should be. The old religions don't work, that's why we have the wars today. We have to create our new mythology. The famous Joseph Campbell, who is the inspiration to George Lucas of Star Wars, said, religion is badly explained mythology. We have to update our mythology. I seek to do that with the visual image. That is, that is interesting. This is a good answer. So we are still optimists. <laughs> Now that is very interesting. Um, I'm an archetypal astrologer. So I practice astrology based on the archetypes of Carl Jung, a great philosopher, Swiss philosopher, who trained under Sigmund Freud and then broke away from him. The archetypes tell us uh, how we can vibrate. So let's take optimism. Yes, I think I am optimistic. So the high vibration of Jupiter that rules optimism is, is, is a sense of using philosophy, using ideas to co-create together. Well, the low vibration is I'm sort of deluded and I, I, I can't think straight. I don't, the world doesn't support me and I get depressed. But ultimately, I, I believe we have to be optimistic because I have faith in humanity. I think the structures don't. The structures are old. Mm -hmm. But we need new structures to support all of us. Because all, most human beings, if not all of them, really want to co-create together. They want to be understood, loved, appreciated, respected. That uh, you were learning about philosophy, about uh, art in general, since you were very young, no? You were an art in residence and were in the Middle East, no? Yes, uh, I had an amazing four or five years in the Middle East. I um, was asked to be the court painter of the Sultan of Oman, 
and I painted for the Royal Court for a year or so. I, I worked under the Ministry of Culture and Arts in Abu Dhabi, having exhibitions there. And I painted a lot and photographed a lot throughout that region. And I lived with local people. I lived with the Al Rashidi tribe, a Bedouin tribe in the Nej Desert of Saudi Arabia and Kuwait for over a month, just living off camel's milk and goat. You have you you find a contrast in these countries, no, uh, between the urban yeah. cities and the rural uh, environment, and yeah. this affecting your art. No? Of course, all the art. Wherever I've been, to, I've been over to ninety countries, and the art, the places, always affect my art. Of course, I think we have to evolve. The idea of me becoming static and just painting one way, just in watercolor or just in oil, or just doing photography, is 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 very painful thought for me. I have to constantly evolve. So going to Bhutan in the Himalayas requires a very different understanding to living in the desert with the Bedouin tribes of Arabia. Yes, I imagine. That is, wow, amazing, no? Yeah, but I always like to tell this joke that having gone to a very strict English boarding school from the age of seven and a half onwards, I think uh, that was good training for me going to live with the Bedouin in the desert because uh, you just spend time with men and it's uh, quite a beautiful but quite a severe way of life. Which of these countries, because we were talking about 90 countries, which uh, inspire you more if there's only one? No? We, I always tend to be more involved in what I'm doing at the present. So Bhutan is very special. I was asked to be ambassador for Gross National Happiness last mm -hmm. year. Have you heard of Gross National Happiness? It's a metric yes. which um, seeks to change and challenge gross national product because gross national product only measures what you and I can trade with each other. It doesn't measure how we relate as human beings or your family or friendships, your lovers. We have to have a new system to understand how humans can measure happiness beauty, uh, and the beauty of happiness, the community. So I was asked to be ambassador there and I've done some portraits of the royal family there and I take people on spiritual trips a couple of times a year to Bhutan. Well, I, I have to read because you cannot say everything what you did before, but I'm going to read because I have your bio here and I'm going to show in how many places you were. No, you work, uh, well, your work is in many galleries and with many collectors. You, were, um, have, you had venues uh, ranging from Doha to uh, London, Muscat to New York and Abu Dhabi to Florida. Um, you are in um, many numbers of exhibition in Abu Dhabi. Uh, in 2010, this is very interesting, one of your paintings was sold uh, at the prestigious auction house of Sotheby's in their Islamic uh, exhibition in Doha, Qatar. Uh, portraits of many international uh, luminaries and head of state, like the president of Nigeria, Pippa Milton Valentino, Prince Hassan of Jordan, well, I, 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 there's a lot. Um, all these people are, all these people are institutional love artists. Love the art a lot. Lovers, lover, how you say art lovers mm. exactly. And how do you feel when they uh, love your art like this? No, and I imagine that this is something for the artist that normally the people is frustrated because they are trying to to show their art and they are not successful enough. No. When you have all of this, all these people looking for your art, how do you feel? Well, you see, for me, I, I, I tend to really want to get into the spirit of the person. I studied politics and philosophy at university, so I'm very fascinated with power, but power in terms of energy. So when I met the president of Nigeria, um, I think in a way what he liked is I could talk to him as a human being, because I'm not particularly impressed by the trappings of power. I'm actually very impressed with what you do with it. You see, an old soul will look at power in terms of energy and see, well, how can you use that energy wisely, sagaciously? And so as the artist, is one can sit there with a, someone who has huge material, political, earthly power and ask the question, well, how are you going to use that in a way that will allow your next incarnation to be a better one? Nice. Okay, this is interesting, but I'm still wanting to know about, for example, in America, which countries you were visiting, because I want to show the people the difference between being in the same city, how difficult it is to be inspired, when comparing with the people are around the world. 
traveling around the world and you are one of them and I'm I'm going to show your artwork and the people the people our audience is going to feel absolutely in love with the contrast that you have in any piece of art you so you were in the old continents or or there one that you have to to go which which no, place I haven't, been to I haven't been to Antarctica yet I'd no. love to go to Antarctica and I must be honest with you there's one other continent that I've never been to and it fascinates me more and more and you can guess where it is it's in the west because I know all the old cultures but I've never been to South America mm -hmm. so I'm Particularly, actually, I'd like to go to Brazil and Argentine. Yeah. Peru is Peru very is a nice place. Picchu, and yes. I'd like to visit the Machu Picchu in Peru. You, you are going to see contrast there. Yeah. And I think we were talking, uh, I was looking in your bio that uh, you, are, you love empathy. And empathy, this is, yeah. empathy for me is, is, is the same. I love that. I love this feeling that when you can put on the foot of somebody else and you feel the same. No? And this is something that I want you to develop more in our interview. Right. Well, it's interesting with empathy. I, I feel empathy is actually based on two core parts. And we always think about me trying to understand you. Well, the actual, in order to do that, firstly, you have to really know yourself and stay true to who you are as a human being. And once you're able to hold that space, so that sense of self-sovereignty, then you can allow people to be who they are, again, through the archetypes. I'm ruled by Mercury, a communicator. M Mercury, the communicator, is my ascendant in astrology, even though I'm actually an Aries, fire sign. I hopefully use it as a way to activate people to find their own sacred contract. There's a wonderful mystic, uh, intuitive mystic called Caroline Mace, and she wrote a book called Sacred Contracts. And ultimately, we all have to find our own sacred contracts. So I, with empathy, partly it's about understanding oneself, but allowing other people to find their sacred contract, because when they do, they become brilliant at what they do. Every human being is, 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 is divine. Every individual has ability. The problem is the current civilization does not support it, because it's actually based on a form of slavery. It's actually based on a form of I will use you. The, the empathy doesn't allow in, in the way that the, the structures today are still very tight. Most people go to work, they slavishly do their job. It doesn't matter whether they're black or white, by the way. This is the, this is the thing, this is why I don't get into the black culture or the, the, the Jewishness of this or the black of this or the Muslim of that. That's nonsense mm -hmm. today, because real healing is to understand the systems that govern the planet. And we have to create new systems to allow the individual to shine, because every individual, given the chance, the vast majority anyway, would actually do amazingly well in their contribution to civilization if they were able to do what they really were here to do. You are influenced to, uh, you are going to schools, you are going to, you are talking with young people too, no? You, are, oh, yes, and you love that, because you, with this uh, fantastic philosophy, it's, it's very interesting to, to be with young people. Yes. No, I'm very lucky. I have an eight-year-old, and I have a seven-year-old mm -hmm. daughter, and an eight-year-old son. So already, straight off the bat, I am constantly with young people. I'm 40. My, all my assistants are normally in their 20s. So um, I'm very much, uh, you know, trying to uh, keep a wonderful mixture of different age groups. I have great mentors who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. For me, age is irrelevant because ultimately the soul, we're, we're, we're spiritual beings living a material existence. So when I look at you, you know, I haven't even thought about how old you are because it's not relevant. It's much more interesting about how we can transform through our, these ideas of ours. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, I've got you. <laughs> you don't need to. You don't know my age. That is good for me. <laughs> I mean, my father always said, "You never ask a lady her age." Yeah. No. <laughs> well, for me, it's the same. I have a grandson, so what can I say <laughs> after that? In any case, we are going to talk a little more about your technique. Uh, you are doing photographies and paintings, no? Um, the photography is uh, something that I really love. What you did. Uh, Especially, there are many that I really love. They are so beautiful. But with paintings, when you do portraits, for example, uh, how you 
begin with a photograph of the person or you do in live in direct? So no, I don't work from life. Um, one of the reasons why I don't work from life is because um, a, a CEO or a head of state mm -hmm. would not be able to, in today's world, sit for many weeks or months. Yes. But actually, it's not just because of that. I work in a very different way, somewhat of a unique, unique way. I have my client, my sitter, sit with me and I read that person's astrology. I, mm -hmm. I read their natal chart their relocated chart, their transits, their lunar returns and their solar returns. I do a huge composite of understanding their archetypal energies. And from that, I am then able to, with the multiple photographs that I take, create some magic. So the photography, in a way, is a bit like Saturn structure. The photography allows me the bone structure of there is the anatomy. That's what I can work with. But the astrology and the communication allows me to come into my right brain, my intuitive, feminine, expansive, receptive, spiritual, magical part of my nature, and connect both to create a portrait. Okay, this is uh, this is interesting. You mix uh, the spiritual part with a real of photo. Course, this yeah. is very nice. I, I would argue you don't take a photo and just paint a photo. You you are you know the person before you talk with her. I have to. And the other thing is, otherwise, you see, especially eyes. I feel a lot of eyes. You can see whether they're predominantly a water sign or a, or a fire sign or an earth or an air, and so you have to capture that elemental aspect of their nature without going too much into detail. There are also many other factors factors, like whether you're a cardinal sign or a fixed sign or a mutable sign, like Aries and Cancer and um, Libra and, 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 and Cap Capricorn are, are cardinal signs. They're initiators. And then you've got the fixed signs, who, like Taurus, who come in and ground what the initiator comes up with. Because you're never going to ask me to finish a product, project. I mean, you know, out there, you, I'm going to initiate it. You have Taurus energy comes and grounds it. And then you'll have energy, for example, like Gemini or Virgo, that will evolve it into the next stage. So it's a cycle. And so in a way, for me, I'm looking at the client and I'm trying to get a sense of who they are. What is their archetype? And that is done through communication. It can't be just from through a photograph. Good. And what is your sign? Uh, so the like 25th of March. I'm Aries. I'm Aries too. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I'm Aries too. Oh. So. And as a result, we have a natural communicational style, which you will understand me. Yeah. You'll understand my energy because you'll see the fire in me to inspire, to us for us to transform. You see, the low vibration of Aries is we're too much the warrior. We get a bit angry, but the high vibration is the pioneer. The 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 forger of new ideas, that's the great. defender of truth. That's that's nice. That's good. Um, about uh, materials, yes. which materials you use to paint? Uh, so I'm pretty varied. I mean, I paint a lot in watercolors, but mainly acrylics and oils. I have moved more into acrylics recently for two reasons. When I travel, it's easier. They dry quicker. I can roll them up, um, and also they don't smell, and, and and they're not so bad on on the skin. But um, the effect of acrylics is pretty similar to an oil. Modern day acrylics, you mix them with gels and different uh, mediums. So you can create quite thick texture. Your base of life is here, no? In New York nowadays. Yes. Uh, you are from uh, England, but from where? From London or? From I'm actually from Cornwall, the west part of England and on the coast. It's very wild. It's where King Arthur comes from. Uh -huh. Have you heard of King Arthur? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yes, yes. So it's full of magic where I come <laughs> yes, from. Yes, you are from, probably you are. My part of uh, my parents' farm is next door to Tintagel, where King really? Arthur lived. Yeah, really? Oh my God! So it's very beautiful down there. Yes, that's great. And uh, well, tell me to finish uh, the print that you want to live in this world uh, for the young generations. For uh, we were talking a lot about that now in the interview, but something with uh, you want to finish this interview, something special that you want to communicate? Yeah, I think what I would say is ultimately for younger people who some of them are losing any faith, let alone hope in the, the fragmentation of civilization, is we are our own destiny. We are our own divinity. We have to really realize that we can co-create our futures together. 
So don't get upset by the old structures. Most of those people, and mainly men, will be dead within 20 or 30 years. That's good. We have to co-create the future together. And we have to allow different archetypes to come into the equation, to the committee, to the the boardroom, to the, the, the whatever we're trying to create, you have to have a philosopher with with a practical doctor. You've got to have an artist with a um, a lawyer. We've really got to pool our resources and have respect for people who bring different things because that's how we create a global civilization. And it is possible, but we have to believe in it. And we have to elect new leadership. We have to have people who are who've got great integrity to lead the civic space, whether it's political or um, you know, on a more cultural level. And uh, well, I, I always say I, I want to, uh, to finish the interview, but all the time I have something else. <laughs> so uh, you are talking about what you want to leave to the world and to the new generations, but what about the artist? Because this is a world that is a very difficult world. Uh, normally the artist has to work in something else at the beginning, you know, and they cannot uh, take all the time to to working what they love. Uh, what you can say to this uh, emergent artist? Yeah, I mean, something that does definitely concern, has concerned me a lot. I feel the contemporary art world is uh, very cruel and a very old paradigm. It is obsessed with selling work purely to corporations for investment purposes. And 80% of most of that collection goes into a vault, into storage. As and when I become more successful, more powerful, I will use hopefully that power to support other artists who have a message of healing. It's very important. This is where I'm very Aries, is I will only support artists in their, they have all their own styles, of course, who are interested in healing. Art has always really been about how you deliver the material to the immaterial. You connect the infinite to the finite. And so an artist who does that needs to be supported nourished and protected. But that's how we, together, as we move into the age of Aquarius, the new age, we have to support that type of paradigm more because we haven't enough in the past. Okay, beautiful message to finish. Uh, I have to tell you that is incredible. I'm going to pass more time with you another day. Uh, we have to talk more. We have to prepare more things together. And thanks a lot to Javier Gomez that introduced me, another great artist uh, that introduced me you. Well, it's a, real it's a pleasure. pleasure to be on your show. Thank you so much for having I'm me. I'm going to send the interview and I'm going to use probably this interview. I'm going to show my magazine. Uh, I'm going to do this interview probably in the future magazine. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you.